If you've seen some of my other projects, I often use my K40 laser cutter to cut and engrave acrylic and plywood sheets to make up components. I love how quickly I can make them up, and having clear or semi-transparent panels on 3D printed enclosures really enhances the overall appeal. I bought my laser a couple of years ago as a tool that I thought I might use on occasion, and it has turned into my go-to favourite workshop tool. It has its limitations though, the bed area is really small, the laser head is at a fixed height making it difficult to use different materials, and the ventilation and water cooling systems look like an afterthought. But then I got this. Gweek, Gwak, Gweek. After watching some of their company videos, I think it's pronounced Jivik. This is their new Jivik Cloud Home Laser Cutter and Engraver, and if you can't already tell, it's intended to compete with the Glowforge. So today we're going to be taking a look at some of its features and see how it performs by making up some Raspberry Pi cases from acrylic sheets. I'll start by saying that I've looked at getting a Glowforge a couple of times, but they've got some really significant downsides, at least in my opinion. For starters, they aren't available here in Australia, so I'd have to use a third party to import one. Then the most significant drawback for me is that the Glowforge has to be connected to the internet and you have to use their own online software to use it. You can't use the laser with any other software packages and you can't use it for offline use. So you're fully locked into their system. The last is the price. The basic unit costs around $4,000 and you're in for nearly $8,500 for the Pro version, which has the pass-through slot, better cooling and an air filtration system. So you really have to get a lot out of the machine to make the price tag worth it. So when Jivik told me about their new cloud machines, this definitely caught my attention. The Jivik Cloud sells for $2,850 for the base unit, $3,199 for the Pro unit that includes the rotary attachment, and $4,199 for the RF version. This has an upgraded RF metal tube laser for increased speed, better laser precision, and significantly longer laser tube life. The GV Cloud is a new offering by the company, but they're not new to the industry. They're a big name in industrial laser machines, and they've been around for 18 years now, so they really know what they're doing, and they know how to build machines that are tough enough to survive in industrial environments. The machine arrives really well packed in a wooden crate, with evidence that it has been well tested. Setup is a breeze. You really don't need to assemble anything, it all comes pre-assembled. You mainly need to remove the packaging and any restraints that they've put in place to prevent damage during shipping. This is the Pro version that includes the rotary attachment and an exhaust ventilation fan. It also includes a basic toolkit, and then the USB cables, a USB camera cable for use with Lightburn, and an Ethernet cable. They've used really good quality components on the GV Cloud. It's got linear rails for each axis, drag chains to support the tubing and cables, and the laser tube's cooling system and air assist are all built into the enclosure. So you don't need any additional connections to water tanks or air compressors. The actual enclosure is all metal, so it's rigid and durable and the top is tempered glass. All round it feels like a premium product, and one which some thought has gone into. Other than that, you just need to plug in the air filter or exhaust fan, and then connect it to your network or computer. To use their cloud platform, you need to connect the laser to the internet using Wi-Fi or a wired ethernet connection. You then need to register an account and input your machine's details, and you'll then be ready to start cutting and engraving from your browser. This works quite similarly to the Glowforge. You upload your file, place it into the print area using the built-in camera to guide the placement, and then click print. The machine code is then sent to the machine and you start your print by pressing the button which goes green. The machine also recognizes their branded materials using QR codes on each sheet. This then adjusts the focus and cutting and engraving settings automatically to suit. I prefer using local software packages on a computer, as I feel this gives me better control over the settings and this machine works really well with Lightburn. So that's what I'm going to use for my cases. They sent me a test file to try out first. This demonstrates some of the cutting and engraving capabilities of the machine. The cutting is done at 30 millimeters per second and 90% power, and the engraving is all done at 300 millimeters per second. The text is engraved at 30% power, and the engraving test ring starts at 5% and increases to 100% power. The speed of the machine is a lot faster than the Glowforge and my K40. The Glowforge is difficult to compare as they only use a scale of 0 to 100%, so they don't use any actual metrics for speed, 
but articles I found online suggest that the maximum speed is somewhere around 120 to 140 mm per second. My K40 typically does 100 mm per second for engraving, and I use about 15 mm per second for cutting plywood like this. So this is around 3 times faster at engraving and double at cutting. Be careful when comparing the values with a diode laser, as they typically quote their speed in millimeters per minute, not per second like this. So when diode lasers say they can reach 10,000 millimeters per minute, that's only a little over 160 millimeters per second. So this machine is much faster than diode lasers available at the moment as well. The first test seemed to be overpowered on the text engraving, it burns almost all the way through the wood, which was virtually unreadable. So I did a second test at the same speed, but reducing the power to just 18%. I also turned off air assist to reduce the smoke marks around the engravings. The fully enclosed cutting area and strong ventilation system work really well. There was no leakage into my workshop, and no visible buildup of smoke within the machine either, even while producing quite a lot during cutting. The second test file came out much better. For me I'm less interested in the speed and more interested in the quality and accuracy of the cuts. I'm not mass producing anything, so I'd rather slow the machine down and get better quality work, even if it takes a few extra minutes. For the case design, I sketched these up in Inkscape. This is based on my 3D printed design, but replaces the 3D printed housing with some interlocking acrylic parts. These will test the accuracy of the laser's cuts, as they fit together with 0.1 and 0.2mm tolerances, and the parts also need to fit the electronics that we're going to be installing in the case. I also redesigned the ventilation panels on the opposite side to the fan to change things up a bit. With the design done, we can load it into Lightburn and then get them cut. Each case fits onto a single A4 sheet of acrylic, which easily fits into the 510 by 290 mm bed of the GV Cloud. I could even use an A3 sheet and cut three cases in one go. It's got a 50 watt CO2 laser that sits in the housing on the Y-axis gantry, and the laser is then directed to the lens by a series of mirrors, as with most CO2 laser designs. It can handle materials with a maximum height of 51mm, and can handle longer materials through a pass-through slot in the front like the Glowforge Pro. This is interlocked for safety, so you'll need to actively bypass the interlock in order to use it, but it is nice that it's an option. I'm going to cut the cases out of a couple of different colours. First up I'll cut this design in 2mm clear acrylic. The advertiser machine is having autofocus, although it's not quite automatic. It works automatically when using their cloud software and their branded materials with QR codes, where the machine automatically recognises the material and then adjusts the laser height. When using it offline and with your own materials, you'll need to set the focus height in Lightburn. The height adjustments of the laser is done electronically though, so you don't have to do anything by hand. The machine breathes through the 2mm acrylic at 70% power and 30mm per second in a single pass. I then cut the other two designs from 3mm coloured acrylic. One from fluorescent green and one from translucent purple. The thicker acrylic required a bit more power, but it still managed at 90% power and at the same speed. You could also easily cut the same design from plywood or even cardboard, so you've got loads of options. The machine can handle most wood-based sheets like plywood and MDF, as well as acrylics and fabrics. They also say it'll cut rubber and plastics, although you'll need to be careful with these as some plastics produce harmful fumes when they're cut. The acrylic panels have come out really nicely. To assemble the case, let's mount the Raspberry Pi onto the bottom panel using some M2.5 by 12mm brass standoffs. We'll then hold the Pi in place with the 6mm standoffs that came with the ice tower assembly. I'm going to use four of these 70mm standoffs to hold the two main sides together, and the side panels will then hold all the other smaller sides in place. So to start, let's screw these into place on the ventilation side panel using some M3 by 8mm screws.
The OLED display can be mounted onto the front panel using some M2 by 10mm screws and M2 nuts. We can then mount the house tower on the Raspberry Pot. I've removed the fan from the side of the house tower and pressed some M3 nuts into the pockets on the front face. We can then mount the fan onto the side panel using some M3 screws. Next let's plug in our fan and display and put their panels into place. I'm connecting the fan to 5 volts and ground, and I'm connecting the display to 3.3 volts, ground, SCL and SDA. The rest of the panels can then be put into place, and we fill in the corners with these smaller pieces. The fan panel can then be secured with some M3 by 8mm screws, and this will lock the side panels into place. You may need to wiggle them around a bit so that the slots all line up with the side panels. That's the case finished up. We now just need to boot it up and load the script for the display. I've put together the other cases in the same way. I really like the look of the clear design with the new ventilation pattern. Let me know which case is your favourite in the comment section. Through my first few weeks of using the GV Cloud, I really liked the large cutting area and the ease of use of the machine. I found the cloud software to be a little unrefined, and I don't really like things like the speed being in percentages, but the machine works flawlessly with Lightburn, which is what I'll be using in any case. As for spare parts and servicing the machine, GVIC have a technical support and service team that they say can help with supplying spare parts, but it looks to me like this machine is also built around fairly standard components for the industry. The enclosure and brackets in that are obviously custom made, but the parts that are likely to wear out or need to be replaced look like they're quite generic, so you likely wouldn't have trouble finding replacements for them. So for basically half the price of the Glowforge for a simile spec machine, with the ability to be used offline with Lightburn, I'd say this is a fantastic alternative and I'm certainly looking forward to using it on my other projects going forward. Let me know what you think of the GV Cloud Laser, or if you've got any questions on it in the comment section below. I'll leave a link to it in the video description, and if you buy one of their lasers using my discount code, you'll get $100 off. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics, projects, tutorials and reviews.